Hey, this week we talk about boys alone, a TV show that locked 10 10 year old boys in a house for like five days and they were like, let's just film and see what happens and it happened exactly like you thought it was going to happen for sure and they had cameramen who were not allowed to interact with the kids uh, no matter how bad things got so mm-hmm. uh, and then we talk about the other variations of the show and then yep. uh, some real life stories that uh, that pretty parallel. incredible so um, hey this weekend uh, I am in Tempe Arizona and Payson it's Arizona. Tempe. It's Tempe Tempe. I'm in Tempe Arizona. Uh, and then next weekend I am in Lynchburg, Virginia at Liberty University. <laughs> so that's not a joke. Don't laugh at that. That's not a joke. That's really I'm doing. I'm a not show laughing there. at it. I yep. respect Liberty University. Go flames. <laughs> and uh, and the week after that we're in uh, me and Shama are in Boston in the fall. So you know from uh, Veggie Tales. Uh, Never been to Boston, Boston in the, in the fall. fall. I'm actually yeah. super excited. We're doing basically the entire state of Massachusetts. Four dates in Massachusetts. If you're Dang. up that way. Uh, would love to see you there. This is things I learned last night, a podcast where Tim teaches me something every week. This week he does it. He does the <laughs> thing where he teaches me something. <laughs> and so I hope to see you at a show. Thanks for checking out another episode. Hey, hey man. man. Ah, hey man. <laughs> What's up? Uh, have you ever heard of Boys Alone? What is on the table? I don't know. You tell me. Have you ever heard of Boys Alone? <laughs> Boys Alone? Is this a band? No. Boys alone. It does sound like a band name, though. It sounds like a '90s boys boy band. <laughs> boys alone. Yeah, B-O-Y-Z. but not, but not, a, but not a real boy band. One of the Disney Channel boy bands. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. Uh, like an animated boy, like a chipmunk boy band. <laughs> boys, a, alone. boys alone. Oh, that reminds me, Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> Okay. Did you know this is a fun piece of trivia I learned this week. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought I thought that your whole thought <laughs> was, oh, that reminds me, Alvin and the chip. I forgot about him. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, boys, a little. I thought that that was the <laughs> that entire was thought. The whole thing. You have a trivia piece about. I have a little trivia. Chipmunks. You know the song. You know the song by the Black Eyed Peas. Um, which one is it? Got a feeling. It might be. I got a I feeling. Got a feeling. Yeah, I think it's. Ooh. I got a feeling. Uh, wasn't written for the Black Eyed Peas originally, because you know how the music industry works, right? Where like the bands aren't writing any other stuff. It's all the industry writers are writing stuff sure. for other artists. You know who's writing? Their it own doesn't stuff? get picked up. Skillet. <laughs> <laughs> My freedom. These are the only things I know. Yeah, that's rough. That's a that's a bad one. Uh, that's a bad one. I promise I'm one of the cool guys. I own a <laughs> pickup truck. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, no, the please don't <laughs> Google images of me in 2002 with my bleached blonde hair and my cool outfits. I've always been a tough guy. <laughs> okay, uh, so <laughs> I got to feel that like- wasn't written. That was written for the chipmunks. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's the <laughs> Emily, my freedom. You know, it's yeah. you got to sing it super my slow. So when you yeah, speed it so, up, yeah, then it's then yeah. it's the speed that it's gonna be in the yeah. That's that actually. Now that you say that, I've never thought about that before. But that's pretty hard. That's impressive that they do that. Yeah, I mean they used to do that. Now they just do the voice. They, they just the, pitch yeah, it. Yeah, they yeah. Just pitch it. But they used to sing it slower. So that it wasn't they. It was one guy who made the chipmunks, right? Well, Al- Alvin. Yep. <laughs> Alvin did all the singing. Yeah. <laughs> no, because so the so there was a writer who wrote. I got a feeling for the. I don't know what the what do they call Alvin and the chipmunks, but it's not the chipmunks. It's the girl chipmunks. What are they? What are they called? Do you the know Spice Girls? No. <laughs> Uh, I didn't even the chipettes, the chipettes. <laughs> so okay. there was a chipettes movie that was supposed to come out. It was supposed to be a Christmas movie that got canceled. Yeah, uh, right before I got a feeling by the Black Eyed Peas came out. What year so they had canceled? this song? It got canceled right before this, and so they had like, this what, song. And the writers, two thousand, yeah, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, something like that. Yeah. So the writers came to the Black Eyed Peas and were like, "Well, we got this song." 
And so the black guy <laughs> will I am was like, <laughs> oh yeah. But if you listen to it, knowing it was supposed to be a chipmunks movie song, it makes a lot more sense. I got a feeling Ooh, that tonight's going to be a good night. And then like, like take it to like the like mm. verse where it's like, mm. fill up my cup. Mazel tov. Like there's like all those things that it's like the, the shout backs. Oh, you can see are that. very good. All right. So imagine I got a feeling in the final scene of the Shrek movie where they're all in the swamp mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. plays. Yeah, a hundred percent. They were so, gonna, they were gonna, is one of the chip heads Jewish. <laughs> I'm actually not sure on that. <laughs> Muzzle <laughs> top. It was the early 2000s. So Being like Jewish. <laughs> Um, Whoa! What? <laughs> you scaring me? No, I was gonna say, did you watch uh, Alex? <laughs> how do you say his last name? Edelman. Uh, Edelman. Uh, Alex uh, on HBO. He's got a special. I have no idea who that is. It's a. It's a really great special, actually. It's yeah. his story. He's a. He's a Jewish comic. Okay. And uh, he went to a Nazi gathering. Okay. Um, as an undercover. <laughs> to his person. Yikes. Um, Yikes. I mean, it's you know, and he was like, it, he, it was a great, it was a really, it's like an hour and a half, yeah. one man show almost type thing. And it was pretty good. It was on HBO. HBO. Yeah, I want to hear that story for sure. Yeah. What did you think I was gonna say? I don't know. It's just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wolf. So, boys alone. Uh, have you ever heard of Cutting Edge? Cutting edge yeah. is the the cutting edge is actually what my my dad's my dad used to work at a metal shop. <laughs> this is real. It was called the cutting edge. Yeah, no, not that. Okay, different thing. Uh, Boys alone, cutting edge. Boys alone. So, cutting edge was a British like TV documentary series on Channel Four in the UK. Okay. Uh, you know what I realized. <laughs> Please do the episode. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> Channel 4 ran this series called Cutting Edge, and it was just a series of like exposés on different cultural things. They would commentate sure. on cultural things. And then one episode, um, specifically the episode titled Boys Alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was like episode like 144. Sure. They just were like, what if we did something crazy? And so they got a house um, in somewhere in England. Uh, they got this house and then they built off the edge of the house an apartment and the, uh, there was a door that entered an exterior door for the apartment and then a door that entered into the main house with a doorbell on it. It's important. Um, and they said, okay, here's the plan. They said, we're going to get 10 children, all boys who between the ages of 10 and 11, we're going to shove them in this house, lock them in there with cameras for a week and just see how it goes. Um, and we're going to no adults, no adults, a uh, bunch of food, bunch of food, bunch of games, bunch of activities, uh, everything that they need to survive. Okay. Um, and there's going to be cameramen, but they're strictly instructed not to talk to the kids and engage at all. So there's, there's adults present, but they're not. But how old are these there. kids? 10 and 11. Cool. 10 and 11. What kind of camera is that? <clears throat> Hey, what kind of camera is that? <laughs> I'm not allowed to engage with the subjects, right? <laughs> okay. Who are you talking to? <laughs> He's not walking away. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you know how easy kids cry, dude. Oh, they're, they're like dead. Angela and Big Brother. Oh my gosh! <laughs> they're so they. What did uh, you say? I said, "Oh my gosh!" Uh, oh no. Okay. Anyway, so they uh, they get these ten kids. They yeah. shove them in this house. Before they put them in the house, though, they didn't have to shove them in the house. There was no <laughs> pushing involved. There was just Go they here. put ten kids in a the house. I they weren't say. like yeah. <laughs> where they they were voluntarily with their parents' permission. Yeah, so the parents they didn't the parents the show them. wasn't the the episode before Boys Alone <laughs> uh, was just uh, was just. Boys alone in the park was the episode before. 
<laughs> and they just gathered they ten kids, to, and they were like, they're like, do you want to make your parents disappear? They did, it was an impractical <laughs> Joker style episode <laughs> where the goal was to just get ten kids. Yeah, and so the next episode was where they put those ten kids in a house. Yeah, the people doing the getting and thought the it was a after bet. that is where. Uh, they made them compete on an island for, uh, for <laughs> forty days. <laughs> outwit, outlast, out survive. Yeah, and then uh, or that's not it. Outplay. Do you outwit, remember that outlast. show where it, I think it, I can't remember what it was called, but it was everyone had a grocery cart, and then they started the timer. You had to go pick up all these certain items from the grocery store and get back to the beginning with the items before everyone else, and you won. Remember that show? Yeah, it's called Black Friday. <laughs> no, was it? That was real life. It's but called show. March thirteenth, twenty twenty. No, it was. You had the grocery cart. Uh-huh. You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, it was part of a show. No, it was the show. No, no, no. The no. show. It was it a was, game show, and the whole game show was you had the cart, and you went. Oh, uh, you might have had like a competition where it was more like prices right in the beginning, and you had to name the prices on the grocery items. Wait, frick! I'm remembering this. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But you had I think it was there was something with you had to the the stuff in your cart had to add up to a certain. Oh, amount. that's right. You had to go and you, you couldn't had, go over. Yeah, you had an exact. So you I your think your goal I was to get the closest the, to the I think throughout the game you had to you had all the questions that gave you your dollar amount and then they would do the dash the grocery dash or whatever they called it. The the store dash shopping dash whatever it was called and then they would have to go get that total. What was of this dollars. called? It was a cool show. Uh, yeah, uh, it made golly. me want to run through grocery stores. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, I don't know why I started thinking of that. It's something we said and there was also <laughs> like you would run through <laughs> and then there was like all these spinning things yeah. and you get knocked over. Yeah, there was like the, a and there was like a pool in the middle of yeah. the store and, and then it was like full of sludge Chinese guys. <laughs> And they like overdubbed him and made him say mean stuff about say you. Really mean. <laughs> really mean stuff. <laughs> no, so the parents got select. The parents volunteered yeah, their kids for this. Obviously, they had to uh, probably sign a pretty lengthy contract. Sure. Um, the kids then had like they went through a screening with a psycho, a child psychologist to like screen if they thought they would be capable of dealing with this emotion. How long were they hoping to put them in there? Five for? days. Five it wasn't days. long. It's like youth camp. Yeah, without without the, the leaders. <laughs> yeah, um, and then uh, and then they put them through a cooking class. They taught them how to cook, uh, so that way they could <laughs> eat while they were there. Um, and okay. then they put them in there. And what they told them, they said, at any time, if you want to leave, there's this apartment, and our child psychologist lives in that apartment for the week. And so you just ring the doorbell, and it's like attach the house, but it's detached. You know what I'm saying? And you just ring the sure. doorbell. She'll come out and she can take you home if you want to go home or she can if you need to talk to the psychologist at any time, then you can ring the doorbell and if you talk have through the emotional problems. intelligence <laughs> to go my I feel irregulated right now. <laughs> Maybe I should speak to someone. Yeah, and to be fair to remember this is 2002 and these are 10 and 11 year old boys. Yeah, uh, so in the UK in the UK. So yeah, yeah they don't. They don't have that yeah. emotional awareness. Um, so ten boys got together. Um, I'm just going to list the names for you real quick: sure. Luke, Michael, Robert, Daniel, George, Mark, Paul, Sam, and Sim. Uh, I don't know if that means anything to you. That sure. list of ten children's names, yeah, very generic names. Um, they get in the house, and it goes. Peter, John, <laughs> James. <laughs> It goes about as well as I think you expect it to yeah. go immediately. One of them sells out their leader <laughs> for some gold shekels <laughs> immediately. It, it, it seems like what happens in the very beginning. They get in this house. I watched this documentary okay. and it seems like immediately they get in this house and I'm I wish they had the foresight and they might not have had the technology for this. I don't know. Um, because this was an actual house like in the suburbs in yeah. London or something like that. Um, and so like this wasn't like a studio that may they made to look right. like a house. So I don't know if they didn't have the gear or whatever they needed to do hit the hidden camera thing, but they had like actual like they did have some hidden cameras because there's some shots that was like clearly like ceiling mounted cameras in but black and white adults with cameras walking around it, if they were bad at the shot every once in a while. You, yeah, you catch <clears> them in a mirror or something. Um, but like there's adults in there. So the there's kids adults are, in there. They're aware that there's adults so the in there. The kids feel safe. 
and they also don't feel in charge. Well, I think here's the thing. The kids are told the people with the camera aren't going to engage with you. They're only they're only going to intervene if it's like a serious safety concern. That's okay. the only time they're going to intervene. Um, and so they're not going to step in <laughs> standing on the counter with a knife. <laughs> Is this it? <laughs> That's <laughs> Is this how how unsafe are we talking here? Unsafe to me or unsafe to them? Because <laughs> this I'm, is great TV. I feel safe right now. Great TV. <laughs> <laughs> like freaking. This is great. Because that's the thing that the kids were told they're not going to intervene. They the adults were told not to intervene. Sam is trying to kill Sims. His <laughs> name is too close. <laughs> Is that a safety issue or is, is that, that how safe are we talking here? No, we'll let it play out. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I don't think he can do it. I don't think he's got it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it broke bones at the worst. That's covered in our contract, right? Um, so they, the kids pretty, pretty quickly, they started like testing it. They were like, how, how much do we have to do f- to get these adults to intervene? The answer was a lot. They're not gonna. <laughs> and so they came in and were they, they like, were they out loud being like, we're going to see like to each other. They're they like, they never they're s- like, Hey, why don't we, you know, <clears throat> punch me? See what happens. <laughs> they never said that, but like it was pretty clear because they went Did in they intentionally and they, trying to find some troll making kids like where some of these kids like I don't, freaking, know. I don't know if they were intentionally trying to find any and I should say most of these kids there's a handful. There's pretty well behaved. Like there's a couple kids that kids. were on the line, but I don't want to even say any of these kids were troublemakers. Okay. But, so yeah, the kids, I think there was a combination of factors. One, I think the second these boys walked into this room, they had this like liberation of France feeling where it was like, I could do whatever do I want. You hear the people <laughs> sing, singing the songs of angry men. <laughs> And then I think there was also yeah, a I part mean, like, of them of that course, was like it's like a sleepover moment where it's just like yeah. no, there's no rules. Yes. They taught us how to make grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's freaking and they rip like, it, dude. They, yeah, they were like they're like and I think there was also just like let's see and how there's a far PlayStation this, this 2. Go. <laughs> I don't think there was any video games. I never saw him play if there was. Yeah, well then there um, wasn't. <laughs> 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 like cuz if there was it would have been a far it different it would have ruined the whole experience. Yeah. yeah. So they immediately ran in. They're <laughs> still playing the video games. Yeah, the kids won't put the PlayStation down. I'm gonna get a tripod. <laughs> I don't, I don't think feel like I need move. to be. <laughs> <laughs> and so they immediately are. It's a combination of the excitement of the situation, right. and I think they're trying to test it. And so yeah. they go in and they find paint. I don't know why they left them paint. And they just start painting all the walls. I think I know why they left to paint. It. They, <laughs> they start were like, painting all the walls. They walk in. There's, there's <laughs> groceries. There are there's six buckets of paint. Here's the thing that I would do. We could do this for this apartment when we leave. Yeah, is just tell them we're on a game show. Buckets of paint, and we go. Don't paint these walls. <laughs> don't paint <laughs> whatever you do. Don't, don't paint, paint the, walls. the walls. And then we come back and it's back to what it's supposed to be. Monsters. That's a way to get your house. <laughs> and that if you're if you're into house flipping, here's a good way to save money on contract. Tell them right? it's HGTV. Get 10 year old kids to believe they're on a competition reality series. Yeah, that's a good. Idea. And then get them to do the work for you. So they, they I had some fifth graders <laughs> build my garage. <laughs> So they start painting on the walls and it's not like they're painting. It's like they're just splattering paint, making a mess, doing sure. whatever. They start b- just breaking stuff for the this sake is of breaking house. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone volunteered their house for this. They start breaking stuff for the sake of breaking stuff. Like sure. they're just breaking furniture, breaking games, all the toys. One of the kids just goes and gets the cereal cache and he just starts ripping the open the cereal cache, like the place where they have all the cereal. Why did you call it the cereal cash? Because it's a lot of cereal. Okay. <laughs> it's and then he just rips open the bags of cereal and just starts running around the house like flinging cereal everywhere. Like they are just trashing the place. Within an hour, this is the house. This is the living room. Within like an hour of them being in there. Um, oh man! If you've ever worked in children's ministry, <laughs> you know exactly what this looks like. Yeah, it's just. What do they work? First of all. Let's look at the color the wall was. What is this? The Garfield house? 
What I think heck? they tried to make it fun. I think they painted it to be like, oh, it's a fun environment for the kids. He's riding the bike inside. That's yeah. dope. Immediately. Yeah, they got the water guns out. They had a water war indoors with water balloons and everything like just just thrashing it because like they're not really thinking through like if you trash this whole place, you got to sleep somewhere for the next five days, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and so that is exactly what happens um, for about four hours. They just go ham yeah. and then they start to, it starts to set in. They're like, oh, these adults aren't going to stop anything we do. And then also we got to live here for the next week. And like we just threw half of our food on the ground and then <laughs> And so just the marshmallows of the cereal. So it's like 840 PM, something like that. They get together. They have a house meeting and here they are in this house meeting and there's just <sighs> trash everywhere. The this the okay, walls so are this thrashed. Kid, I'm going to call it this kid in the gray shirt is the one who like takes charge. Uh, mm. I don't know who took charge, but they said let's get together house meeting and they said we need to elect a leader. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> which is very interesting that what? They, yeah, they sat down. They said we need to elect a leader and that person's going to help maintain order because they immediately realized they're like this is chaos. We can't have no one in charge uh, and okay. so they elect a leader and you're hundred percent right. That kid is the kid that they elect yeah, as the he leader feels like I mean look at his haircut. Dude. Yeah, his name and is he's, he's the only one wearing a watch is why he's in charge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he's the only one that kid's got a camera in this house that was like I'm gonna need to be able to tell <laughs> what time it have to is. Know what time it is? Uh, his name is George. Wearing a watch when you're a kid is like a flex. That's a power move. Yeah, that's the because it's like I am responsible enough to not lose this, and also yeah. I know how to read it. I know how to read. You know. That's you saying to your other people, like, <laughs> ask me what time it is. Oh, I know. I know. And it, but it's one of those, it's one and of those. It's like, I'm in fifth grade and I need to keep track of time. It's one of those, <laughs> you know, <laughs> having a watch is when your childhood starts to die. Yeah, because you, when you're a kid, you don't, it doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't matter what time it is. Everyone, if you're a fifth everyone grader knows. tracking time. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the secret. Oh, it's five thirty. It's dinner time. Shut up. Go live. Go outside. That's the secret. That's why we're all so stressed. It be, it's because we're so concerned with the time. We should get and rid of clocks. <laughs> <laughs> Your watch pants a little tight. <laughs> didn't take it off. <laughs> Someone's got to be in charge here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the power move to you're convince not everyone <laughs> that they don't need their watch and then keep yours. So you're the only one capable. Of it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> now that it's five to eleven, I'm glad that. <laughs> Let me tell you what time it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <That's so laughs> Let's all get rid of our watches. Let's throw them in the river. That's right. That's right. We you don't idiots. Need them. <laughs> and now I'm the only one who knows. <laughs> hey, if you've been watching for a minute and you like this show, a great way to help out is by becoming a Patreon supporters. Our patrons get a ton of perks for their support. They get ad free episodes a week early. They get a Discord with our hosts and producers. Uh, we get, do monthly hangouts. We do. There's a way to get birthday messages on your birthday. There's a lot of great perks, but more than anything, you just help make sure that this show continues to happen forever. We never want to stop. We're going to keep doing this forever. If we have enough patron supporters, we can put our brains in those little vats and like have AI pretend it's us. And so like we can keep doing it long after we die. But that only happens if you support us on Patreon. <laughs> so we appreciate your support. Thanks for your help. Uh, if, if you don't want to support, that's totally fine. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate you watching the show. <laughs> so, so George, <laughs> have I told you what my dad thinks about time zones? <laughs> What? <laughs> That's a really funny way to phrase that. <laughs> but my so like my dad doesn't yeah. think that we should do time zones anymore. Why? Well, I'm getting there. <laughs> he thinks that it should just, you know, you know how like when you know, well, you don't know, you're not a pilot. But when you fly, you go on Greenwich time and Zulu time. Yeah. And uh, so we do the universal clock, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what he thinks we should all just live on the universal time. Yeah. And like he's in, you know, and your argument would be like, well, 7 a.m. would be so. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You would just get used to the sun coming up. 
at, at whatever your time 5 is. 5 p.m. Yeah. where you yeah. are. Yeah. And then it would go down. And then when you see hours posted, it would be <clears throat> out. There was it would hours. just be that. Yeah, which the problem with that, though, is when you move because then you move to, I don't know, say Japan <laughs> and then now you're like, oh, I it's it's three o'clock in the morning or three o'clock. Uh huh. And to you, that's the middle of the night. Does but that in change reality, anything? It does because now your brain, because now the number in your brain that you've associated, getting used to that's really tough. Yeah. It's not impossible, but it's tough. But it would make it a little easier when you do move to Japan to go, okay, so now my work hours are going to be three to one instead yeah. of nine to five. Yeah. And the sun is setting at... 10 you know I think that's I mean I, I, I it does make sense okay so anyway. have you seen never mind um, my, my dad just really passionately thinks that we should get rid of time. he's like he's like it's just so frustrating yeah and I agree with him I have actually seen this thing that if you're on like the far side of a time zone yeah you're actually less healthy because your sleep schedule is worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's because because you, yeah, you're either waking up or going to bed too early. Or too I've always late. wanted to build a house big enough in Indiana where the time zone thing is, so that one side of my house is in Eastern time and the other side is in Central time. So then you could just walk. You're like, oh, I gotta wake up in an hour. I, I have <laughs> an idea. <laughs> Let me go to the other bedroom. Yeah, and I get an extra hour of sleep. Pretty funny. That's big brain <laughs> right there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so George, being I was the only just one thinking about. I was trying. just thinking about. Uh, uh, what are we? <laughs> daylight savings time. <laughs> oh, we're still day one. <laughs> Six. Oh shoot, we got five days to go. Uh, it's okay. We've only spent four minutes on this. <laughs> I know because I'm tracking action. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine. Let's keep going. So George, we can cut out all your chipette stuff. Over here. That doesn't need <laughs> to be in here. Gets but leave this part in where I reference it because people will be like chipettes. Chipettes. <laughs> what? I got a feeling this episode's gonna suck. <laughs> <laughs> we're, hit, we're hitting a good stride right now. Okay. So what George. I was saying about daylight savings time <laughs> is that <laughs> is that there's. There's two types of people, right? In the fall, when you gain an hour of sleep, yeah. right? You can either go to bed at a normal time and actually gain an hour, or you can yeah. do what my wife does, and she goes, "Oh, it's only eight p.m. right now," yeah. and so she'll stay up till two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll go to and she'll wake up the next day and be like, I'm "I don't so feel tired. any more rested," and I'm like, "Yeah, because you didn't gain an hour. Up so you late. stayed up till two. You stayed up three extra hours." That's what I'm saying. These kids, like, yeah. so this, so they've elected this guy, and they were like, "You tell us when bedtime is. You tell us what's the rules." Yeah. So immediately, they All right, start watch man. So immediately he kind of divvies up. He's like, he's like, all right, we got to get this place back in order. Like we ruined this place. Sure. And so he divvies up some chores. Let's and so let's clean the paint up. So he's like, yeah, you guys got to wash the paint off the walls. You guys got to vacuum. You guys got to try to fix this stuff. We broke. You and guys got to figure out what that smoke monster <laughs> is. <laughs> Jack, Jack, we got to go back. There's a computer upstairs. You got to put this number in every hour. Like, I don't know uh, or something <laughs> I don't know what will happen. So don't find out. Um, so the kids who vacuum are the yeah. only ones who like can actually achieve the goal that they were given. The rest of the kids are trying to clean this paint off the walls and they're just scrubbing it with sponges and water and they're like, it's not yeah. coming off and the kids that broke stuff are like, I don't know how to fix furniture and so they pretty quickly give up. It lasts like an hour and then they go back to just being chaotic and so they're breaking. And they're like, this is way more fun. <laughs> it's before. so much easier when we did have a leader. Yeah, and so they continue just I mean that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they continue just being chaotic. They were cleaning up and then some kid was like My freedom. <laughs> Liberty. So they they start being pretty chaotic again. Yeah. Um, but now what happens is they have George in charge, and so now they start bringing their grievances to George, 
And George is now trying to be like the mediary between kids. Okay. And so he brings them together. He keeps bringing them in the living room and being like, what's your issue? What's your issue? And like trying to solve these problems, but he's not doing a good job sure. at it. So like issues are spiraling worse and worse and worse, but nothing gets like okay, crazy, too crazy. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so the first night, all the kids stay up to like 2 a.m. They're literally in the backyard just screaming for the sake of screaming. <laughs> Noise complaints keep getting called. The police keep showing up and the producers are outside. They're like, it's it's for a TV show. Yeah. And the police <laughs> like, oh, all right. <laughs> we love the telly. Can, can, can I be on? <laughs> it's very funny. There was a crossover episode of uh, Cutting Edge and Cops. And <laughs> they tased them. <laughs> The producers, the they producers, found out they were the minors cops. later. Yeah, <laughs> the producers taste the cops. That's the twist. We're here to protect these. Well, kids. You know, in the UK, they don't have guns. Right? <laughs> yeah, they were like, we're not as scared of you. Yeah. <laughs> and so what are you going to do nightstick me? <laughs> yeah, so they stay up all night um, and then the next day they go back to doing what they were doing. They spend a whole sure. a whole day water gun fights indoors, riding bikes around indoors, all this stuff just Trash in the house for there. Every once in a while, George has brought a grievance and he tries to make it better and doesn't really. Okay. Um, the kids, mind you, are just eating the cereal and candy. Like they, they're not making any food. They learned how to cook, but they're not doing yeah, it. Yeah. And so they do too. a whole day <clears throat> and stay up till like 2 a.m. again, go to bed, wake up. Um, and now things are getting a little strange. The kids are clearly hungry, <laughs> they're clearly like on sugar highs. And they're clearly very tired. Yeah. And so the stress starts to get to them. So they start trying to cook. Um, <clears throat> but it appears like they forgot everything they learned in their cooking classes. And so they start trying cooking stuff. They didn't attempt to use the stove or the oven at all. They were just using the microwave. And they breaking eggs, putting it in a pan, putting it in the microwave. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating when I say they got a bowl and they cracked like four eggs in this bowl. And poured probably three cups of milk into this bowl. Didn't measure it, just poured it into the bowl. Eggs and milk and put it in the microwave for like two minutes and then got it out and tried to eat it. And they were like, oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> it's like, yeah, of course it is. Of course that's disgusting. <laughs> Didn't like stir it up or nothing? Nope, nope. Just poured it in, shoved it that's in. That's like when I had a babysitter when I was a kid. <laughs> I remember this so specifically because it's one of those things where you just go, did my mom care if I lived or died? Um, I had a babysitter who, and this was like the time where I'm a kid. I don't remember how yeah. old I am, but I know yeah. that she was like maybe 13. Yeah. So it's young. You just that, used to leave children in charge of other about, children. Yeah. If you think about babysitters, especially back in the day, like it's kind of insane. Yeah. Cause they were like 11, 12, 13 and uh, she didn't know how to make ramen. And I remember her, she didn't break it up. She <laughs> microwaved no water, a ramen patty that just turned dark in the microwave. Yeah. And yeah. then she was like, I don't think this is right. <laughs> and I was like, that's not right. <laughs> I was like, there should be water. <laughs> and so then she put water on top of an already microwaved thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like burnt. It's like charred. That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that so, so clearly. Clear. Brie always tells a story. She babysat a girl whose parents were like super wealthy. She said that one day she only ate. I think it was spaghetti. Uh, it was the only thing she ate. And so she made her spaghetti. Yeah. And then the girl was walking with her spaghetti and tripped on their Persian rug. It was like an eight thousand dollar rug and just spilled spaghetti sauce all over it. She spent. And then the girl stood up and went, "You did this." <laughs> <laughs> she said they spent like three hours. The rest of the time, the parents were gone trying to clean it and they couldn't clean it. It just and, kept getting worse. Yeah, and they were terrified. And then the parents got home and she said they just laughed. <laughs> they went, you spent three hours. <laughs> oh, They're like, we'll just order honey, a new one. We'll kill another one. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you try to clean it that much? It's not. Who it's only cares? eight grand. We're rich. <laughs> Now here's your fourteen dollars. <laughs> Go home. Uh, so they uh, their cooking is failing. They then they go pretty quickly. They try to cook a couple other things. Doesn't go over well. And they look at the cameraman, and the cameraman yeah. is like, 
I'm, <laughs> I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to help. And, uh, <laughs> and they're like, if I put the fork in the toaster and the camera guy's like, and they're like, okay, <laughs> if I do this and they go, <laughs> yes. They did actually uh, later that night. They tried to cook hamburgers. They had frozen patties. They tried to cook hamburgers. Yeah. They're cooking the hamburgers. I get uncomfortable cooking hamburgers. They couldn't, you know? <laughs> yeah, and they so they're cooking these hamburgers on the stove and it starts smoking and the boys. It's it's a ridiculous scene, especially when you know there's an adult right there with a camera filming this whole thing because <laughs> it's smoking like a lot of smoke and the boys are freaking out trying to figure out why it's smoking and it is odd because they just put the frozen patties on like they are brand new frozen patties and you look at them and they're they're not burning. Yeah, and so the boys are like what's going on. Why is this burning? They didn't realize they had a tea towel on the stove and the tea towel was catching on fire oh, no. and that's what was and they grabbed the towel and they start like waving the towel around and like trying to put the towel out and it breaks apart and there's like burning pieces of towel and they're like trying to stomp on it. There's like a literal fire. They're starting the cameraman's just sitting there. <laughs> Uh, they're setting the house on fire. Is that enough? I uh, know the fire department's pretty close. If it gets to that, understood. <laughs> <laughs> they don't realize that they left the gas on. They're about to light matches. <laughs> I'll just I'll stand further away. I'll I'll just back up. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, and so, <clears throat> where are the cameramen sleeping? I don't know if they're sleeping. I, I my my assumption is that they're taking shifts. Okay. And yeah, they're there at all, twenty four seven. So my yeah, assumption right. is that they're coming in and relieving sure, sure, them sure. and going back through that apartment. Yeah, is my assumption. I don't know. They never explain that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. So then it does get a little sad at moments. There's moments where kids are kids and they kind of start bullying each other. A couple kids start getting singled out. George does a really good job of being a leader in this situation. I, and I should say, not being a leader. <clears throat> He doesn't actually like lead anyone or stick up for the kids, but he does comfort the kids that are being bullied. And so there, okay. <laughs> there's a doesn't scene. stick up for him, but then comes along and goes, "Hey, yeah, I'm sorry. It really sucks that yeah, the- I said that earlier. <laughs> I'm really sorry. That <sighs> sucks that I was. He just gaslighting so under. I just I had to do it for power. You know, yeah, like, I, you get it. They can't see me be weak. <laughs> what am I supposed to take my watch off? <laughs> yeah. Can so, you read this? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, dude. <laughs> oh. So uh one of the kids does end up deciding he's gonna sleep outside. So he puts up a tent outside and he got bullied that much? Yeah, and so he decides he's gonna sleep outside. It takes outside. a lot for a kid to eject from uh, <laughs> a sleepover where he just yeah. goes, I'm sleeping outside. I'm sleeping outside. <laughs> well, I should say there were kids that were sleeping outside every night. Like they oh, okay. set up a couple of tents. There's kids that were choosing between inside and outside. And okay. so he chooses I'm gonna but he wanted to be out there alone. So it's a yeah. little different. They elected him as the kid who was supposed to clean all the dishes and like he peer pressures into it. And so he ends up being the dish cleaner the rest of the week. And so it was, there was some sad things like that. Another kid, Michael got blamed for all the issues in the house because he okay. kind of was like he was the one breaking everything. He was the one throwing cereal everywhere. Sure. And like we were almost out of cereal. It's he the was only the thing. Bike. No, oh, okay. no. He, uh, mm. I don't know if I have doesn't matter a picture of him, um, but he was the one they're, they're like, you're the reason why we're almost out of edible food. Because uh, we can't cook, and you threw cereal all over. He's the like, house. "Yeah, we'll tell that to these three squirrels I killed out back." <laughs> <laughs> like, you killed squirrels, <laughs> um, and so he—they uh, were dead when I found them. <clears throat> they singled them out, and this was actually a really interesting moment because they singled them out. They, <laughs> and it starts to escalate pretty quickly. Um, they lock him in a closet for a while while they try to decide what they're going to do with him, and then they okay. they open it up, and then they drag him out of the closet, drag him in the backyard, tie him to a chair in the backyard. And they're like, <laughs> and, and they that's they, this is what they've watched in movies. They get George and they're like, George, what are we going to do to him? George's and like, so untie him. So they're all sitting there. The cameraman's just watching. And one of the kids like, we could just beat him up. <laughs> and George is like, that's actually an option. And then all of a sudden, George just has a moment and he's like, he's like, we should go. Uh, we should go talk to uh, Miss Scott 
And everyone's like, oh, that's a good idea. And so they all get together. They run upstairs. And they ring the doorbell. They're tied and up. <laughs> yeah, and they're chanting at the door. They're like, Scott, 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 Scott. And she comes out and like, we we want to talk to you. And they're like, let's go get the kid you tied up in the backyard. They go to one of the bedrooms and it starts like just everybody in this group counseling session, like ganging up on Michael. Kay. Michael's very clearly having a hard time with it. But by the end of it, she does do a pretty good job like redirecting everyone and everyone realizing, oh, we're all the problem, not just Michael. Like we all have had a part in this because she's watching this whole thing from her studio apartment. She's eating popcorn. She's (laughs) like watching the live streams and she's like, I love watching kids suffer. (laughs) Uh, And so I love this. So they all agree like, yeah, we're all the problem. It's not just Michael. Michael is literally like curled up in a ball in his bed like yeah. crying. And Michael's parents are like he needed a reality check. <laughs> yeah, that's Someone why we sent him. him. Um, and so then Miss Scott just stands up and walks back at her apartment and leaves him there. Um, and so was, okay, good talk. <clears throat> the kids go over. They try to comfort Michael. Michael's not having any of it. Um, and so like, you guys just, just tied me up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you literally just tied me up outside. The only reason you stopped and so they they talk for a long time. Eventually they decide Sim gets the idea. He's like we should play manhunt. And so they like, go downstairs to go play manhunt. And when they get outside, they find um, a what's the word? Chipmunk, <laughs> not a chipmunk. Uh, gopher, uh, some animal like that. I can't remember what animal okay. it was, but some small animal, chipmunk, gopher type animal. And they decide let's kill it. Uh, and so they start chasing this thing around the backyard. They trap it in uh, in like some bushes, and they're all throwing stuff at it, trying to get this gopher or chipmunk or whatever. And that's the moment when the camera crew steps in and says, hey guys, we should stop this. <laughs> so to be clear, camera guy watches Michael get tied up <laughs> relentlessly bullied the whole week well, and then they go after set the house animal. on fire. This is the same thing as when someone's like they see a homeless person on the street. Yeah, and then they see that homeless person has a dog and they go, Oh, I feel bad for the dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're like, hey, there's a human being there's right a next human to the dog. Right there. It's, it's the same. The I was just thinking about this in movies about how like you don't want to see a dog get hurt in the movie. I just watched uh, a yeah. fall guy. Yeah. And there was and I was watching is a fight scene where I'm watching them shoot people over yeah. and over and over. Yeah. And there's this dog that's barking and I was like, don't shoot the dog. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with me? Yeah, yeah. It's because we're so desensitized to that. If we had a bunch of movies where dogs got killed all the time, you probably wouldn't care as much. I'm going to start watching more of them. <laughs> what are you doing? Just trying to desensitize myself to the death of animals. I don't want to care this much about. I don't want to care this much about them. <laughs> I care too much about animals. <laughs> Uh, across from my gym in Kansas City uh, <laughs> is the animal hospital. And have I told you about this? No. And every Thursday, the big white van pulls up and comes and picks up the animals yep. that didn't make it. <laughs> yep, yep. And <laughs> so every Thursday morning, it happens. We see it happen because uh, I'm at the gym every Thursday. I was, I was, a, I'm a big strong man. Uh, <laughs> but I'm in there working out one time, and I just hear like this. <laughs> And I look up and there is a there's a middle aged white lady on the elliptical that faces the animal hospital <laughs> and she is just sobbing on this <laughs> elliptical. <laughs> That's and I, and I was like should have watched some more YouTube videos. <laughs> I'm desensitized. Yeah, they could they could take that right out. <sighs> <laughs> my family, my freedom. <laughs> I watch cats die on the internet. <laughs> I'm Doesn't a hard hurt me. Man. <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> so they step in, make sure they don't kill the gopher or whatever it was. Okay. Um, and the boys go through the rest of the week. Just as much of a mess, not sure. eating anything, sugar highs. By the last day, the last full day, it's very clear that most of these boys want to go home. They don't want to be a part yeah. of this anymore. They are emotionally and like physically just so drained because yeah. they barely ate, they've barely slept, they've expelled a ton of energy. Yeah. And they're all really starting to get on each other's nerves. 
And so there's a lot this last house isn't big enough for them to like separate. (laughs) Yeah. And so this last day is a lot of tears, a lot of kids that are like very clearly like very stressed and emotionally distressed, ready to go. This is like church camp, but they none of them want to break. None of them want to be the kid who goes home. And so all of them are like holding on and like there's just so many shots of them on this last day where they're like sitting in chairs just like what literally white knuckling it like gripping the chair seats and just like staring off in the wall to like make it through the day so that way they didn't quit. It's pretty, pretty rough. <laughs> um, there was a kid and <coughs> when I was a when I was a camp counselor, uh, his name was we'll say Colby. Okay, that's what it was <laughs> and, uh, and he uh, I remember the other counselor in our cabin said to him because he he was he would egg stuff on and then like he would get made fun of and he like he would just crumble. Yeah, and uh, the other counselor said something wise that I think I've actually learned from and maybe you should too. Yeah, is he said Colby. They probably wouldn't bully you so much if you weren't such a baby every time it happened. (laughs) This was like Thursday and I remember being like I don't think that was the right thing to say to this (laughs) sixth grader, but but also uh, it's honestly not, totally it's not bad advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. but he was the kid that like by Thursday he was just like no one likes me and, it, and yeah. like, the house was like buddy. Yeah, they're doing it to get that rise out of like, you. Yeah, you're not likable buddy like <laughs> I, you know, it's like he didn't say that to that kid. Yeah, you know, I hope that kid turned out okay. He was I got fine. a YouTube playlist to watch for he you was like watch. that kid that you have a soft spot for you like man, but like he just really was like Mm-hmm. Shooting himself in the foot on any chance that like people were like, "Hey man, come play with us." Yeah, it was almost like he was like pulling out his pocket knife and deflating the ball, <laughs> and being like, "Ha ha ha!" And then the, and then he's like, "Why don't they like me? Why don't they like me?" Yeah, like, well, I don't know. You did some sucky stuff. Yeah, man. <laughs> so on the last morning, they will they all wake up. Their parents are he's in like, a line. In he's the- probably like early twenties <clears throat> now. He's he's some college girl's problem now. So <laughs> so. They wake up in the morning. All their parents are in a line in the front yard waiting for them. And so they all walk out the front door together and they the reunited with their parents. But the parents get to come in and see what they did to the house. All their parents are just like, what did you guys and do? All of them are like, it was Michael. It was Michael. It was Michael. And Michael's like, it wasn't me. It wasn't it wasn't me. me. I was tied up in the backyard. Yeah. And they're like, what? Their parents were they're like, looking at the, the camera guys and like different shift. They, <laughs> it wasn't that one. Wasn't me. I wasn't here yeah. for that one. Um, and they're just yeah they're they're blown away that their kids did that. Um, all of them except for one parent. One parent's like they're honestly like, I probably would have done the same thing. It's actually kind of like what you did with them. <laughs> yeah, we should let you do this at all. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty sweet. Um, and so this this got some interesting reception in the public. Most of the people, most of the public was like, this is not okay that you did this. It's pretty wrong. But honestly, like we want to watch more of it. Yeah, <laughs> and so. Give us boys alone too. So they spent a year cleaning up this house and then cutting edge about Stop 50 it. episodes later put out a show called girls alone and it was in the same house a group of 10 10 and, and 11 it was year the old most girls boring episode of the whole season because they all were well adjusted and did nothing. <laughs> what is interesting is the first night they the group of girls got together. They cooked a spaghetti dinner with meat sauce and they baked a cake and they had dinner around a table together and 10 and 11 year old girls and they they all like they put together a fashion show that they all did in the house. No damage, no messes. They actually did. One of them did spill some of their spaghetti and they all got together and they with soap and they cleaned up the carpet and got the stain on the carpet real quick so that way it wouldn't stain. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Exact opposite experience of what happened with the boys. They did end up drawing on the walls at one point, but what they did, it wasn't, they weren't drawing to like damage the walls. They were drawing to decorate the space above their beds. And so they would like put their name and they decorated their space and they painted. They did feel guilty about it later and try to clean it off, but they couldn't clean it off. Um, by and large, <clears throat> didn't damage the house. They did. There was drama. There was situations where like sure. they gotten disagreements. There was situations where girls did kind of get bullied um, and it was like it was sad in moments. There was two girls that did end up leaving uh, deciding to leave. They oh. never actually called the therapist in, but two girls did end up leaving, but for the most part, honestly, 
pretty uneventful. Like they cooked for themselves, <laughs> they they cleaned the house, they they That's they divvied saying. up chores, they cleaned, yeah. they kept the house clean, they showered. <laughs> like they, the boys did not shower at all, and so oh, like I'm sure, I didn't yeah. even think about that. Yeah, and yeah, so like had, that was at church camp. We had to be like, <laughs> hey, yeah. You smell. Yeah, you stink. Go shower. The girls, the what I will say is the girls did pull pranks on each other. And when they pulled the pranks, they were a little like meaner. Like the okay. boys were just like hurting each other. Yeah. But the girls, like there was one scene where a girl was fresh here with another girl and she took a big bucket of water and just dumped it on her bed without her knowing. So like right before bedtime. And so like her bed was just soaking wet that night. And so like there was stuff like that that was just a little meaner. Where on the boys on the other hand just fought. Um, I forgot to mention the boys did get in. They split into two groups and did get into like a full scale war. Um, and so they split into two separate bedrooms. They were like throwing stuff at you each other. You didn't mention that. <laughs> I forgot that. I forgot I the forgot war. About the, I forgot the, the war, war of day three. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did get into a whole war. It was four on six. It was the quiet ones versus the loud ones, and they were like literally just throwing whatever they could find in the house at each other. And it was like it was pretty violent. Um, <laughs> The cameraman didn't step. Like he was like actually that. angry though, or oh like- yeah, it was like a real war. Like they were like yeah, they were throwing stuff at each other. Um, and so uh, after this, they didn't. Uh, they were like yeah, that this this the girls alone thing wasn't as exciting as the boys. And so um, let's bring those same boys back. <clears throat> so five years later in two thousand nine, they said, hey, remember when this was really cool? Uh, so they did a boys and girls alone series. In 2009, and it was a series. It was its own show. It was a four episode special. Okay. And the concept of this show was a little different because in this show, there's two houses right next door to each other the boy house and the girl's house. And they both had the food, they had all the stuff, but they were given like tasks that they had to do throughout the course of the week. See, and I think that's probably what the <coughs> what the difference maker is going to be is if they've got to accomplish something together. Yeah. That'll create a team sense <coughs> and a sense of like direction. Yeah, but if it's just five days, just do nothing. That's the same thing. I mean, like, you know, church camp. Yeah, those team exercises were fun, but it also like there's a reason we do cabin versus cabin. Yeah, is because it solidifies your cabin as yeah. like a, we're looking out for each other kind of thing. Um, it didn't go better. Uh, <laughs> It actually went way worse. Uh, so they well, yeah, because there's girls and like, there's there's like opposite sex involved. <clears throat> well, what they did was they gave them money, and so instead of just stocking the house with all the food and goods that they go need, to the store they gave them money. They said you have to budget, you have to put together a budget, and you have to go to the store and you have to buy Same everything age that group? you need. Same age group, you have to buy everything that you need, and so. They followed these kids. The kids walked down to the local store. They cameraman <laughs> followed them to the store and did not interview. Let's imagine <laughs> a group of 10. You kids. drive. You're just driving to work one day, right? You're just driving. <laughs> you see a group of 10 children and a cameraman <laughs> and the cameraman is not interacting with them <laughs> and is following pretty far behind them. Actually, <laughs> just a, there's a group of 10 unaccompanied minors by themselves and then maybe 15 20 feet later is one man with a camera who is just keeps talking to himself here and you're like, you know what? I'm going to keep going to work. I'm going to I don't want to be involved in whatever that is. Um, so they go to the store. And the kids just buy junk. Like of they course. don't buy anything of substance. The girls actually bought cigarettes and they smoked them and the cameraman did not intervene. Wait, wait. <laughs> how do they how do they buy them? I think they got an adult to buy them for them. I think they went and they found an adult in the parking lot. They were like, like, can you buy hey, us? <laughs> yes. Hey, will you buy it? So. And and the adult was like <laughs> uh. This is the camera. Like, I don't know if I'm. Oh, he just goes. He just goes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great TV. That'd be really good TV. And the girls smoked them. <clears throat> the girls smoked them. Uh, and so, and the whole concept of the show, there was three episodes solo, and then the fourth episode, they made the girls move into the boys' house, and that was also chaos. And so, move in as in like, okay, wait, hold on. There's three episodes. <clears throat> same. Kids, same kids, yeah. Okay, they didn't do this three different times. No, it was the same group of and kids. Before the episode, Cut those same episodes. kids moved in. What day? I'm not sure. Here's what's interesting. I'm foggy on the details, and everyone is because this show 
you can't watch it. It doesn't exist anywhere. It created such a giant backlash that while it was on, there was like government pressure from the United Kingdom to like shut the show down. Yeah. And Channel 4 was like, nah. the queen was like, don't do this. <laughs> don't. Channel, Channel 4 was like, we're getting 2.4 million views a night on this. Yeah. Like, we cannot shut this down. That's not going to happen. And Channel but, 4 was like, my freedom. <laughs> you know, like there. <laughs> and so, yeah, Channel 4 kept running the show despite it being a thing where nobody, every there was a massive public uproar, but everyone was watching it. It was the yeah. thing. And so, everyone was like, this is child abuse. Like, you can't let this happen. And allegedly, this one was. Well, and like, at that point, though, it's like. Guys, it already happened. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's not. You're not going to get it to stop. You know, like well, you're not going to. I think they didn't want it them to air it. Like they don't. They're like we shouldn't put this. Public. We're gonna because because in this one things things did get worse. Like there was a, a situation with a knife where this kid like was arguing with another kid with a knife and like threatening him with a knife. There was from the promo. This screenshot comes from the ad that they ran to promote this show. Like a genuine fist fight between two of the kids. This kid's getting like nailed in the face. I don't know how long I can show that without getting demonetized. Um, it's blurry. <clears throat> that's fine. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, and here's another shot from this of them alone at the grocery store. Um, just a bunch this of children. This is very 2009. Yeah. Uh, those are those are some cool kids too. That's a 2009. Those are like yeah, up that is on the trendy. style. That's trendy. Very yeah. trendy. Um, so. This one doesn't go over well. I tried really hard to find footage of it. I found one site that has two of the episodes, but I did say two of them are removed. And it was the it was a site where you had to like download. And I, like when a I forum. clicked to play it. It popped up and said, "There's viruses. There's viruses." You know? <laughs> yeah. I was, like, like, no, I was no, like, no, I'm no. not gonna download these from this site. So it's a, I, I, as far as we can tell, it's been wiped from existence. This this like new series that they did a lot more controversial, a lot more violence. Apparently. 11 year old girls smoking cigarettes and they just broadcast it. They're like, this is great television and it got um, a lot, a lot of heat, a lot of yeah. potential lawsuits, child and social services like was involved. Like it was a whole ordeal when this one rolled out. They went back and they interviewed the kids from the original ones and the, at that time they're in college. They're yeah. like 1920 and like, yeah, that was one of the most scarring experiences of my life. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like sure. All of them were like, yeah, I have some serious emotional trauma from that. Yeah, um, they're like it was very difficult. Sometimes being- I wake up from my dreams, <laughs> and I'm like, ha, ha, untie me, you know. Please, like you know, like actually, the villain in my dreams is always a cameraman. It's like I was a person with a camera as a head. <laughs> it's like someone who's just, who's just head, standing there and a- not helping me. Someone who like could help me, who could, but isn't who could stepping in and doing anything. But he's choosing not. What do to. you think, like the as a cameraman, like as an operator, as like a production person yeah. on this yeah. show? There's got to be some levels of guilt that you feel for not intervening earlier. Oh, probably. I'm you sure. Know? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they feel guilty too. Because yeah, they watch a lot of sketchy things unfold, especially in the newer season. The older yeah. season, like there wasn't. I think in the newer season, I think the producers were like, "We know how to make this good TV." Because yeah. in 2002, reality TV was really new. Oh, for sure. By it 2009, was, they were like, hey, "Give the kids cigarettes." You know? Yeah, <laughs> watching watching the two. I watched the both the boys and girls alone, and it was pretty dull. Like it was like. Very slow, like very just. But like, for 2002, groundbreaking. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, 2009, they put them in situations. Same to thing get when you go watch reruns of like those nanny shows. I do that all the time. <laughs> I watch them all the time. Every day, I'm watching those British ladies come into <laughs> to Alabama homes, and they just go, "I'm here to put this house back in order." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they come in, and it's. A mess. They yeah. ride in their little limo like Mary Poppins. Yeah. So the, <laughs> a lot of people compare this. It's the only thing I watch. <laughs> <laughs> I watch reruns of Nanny Nine One One. So a lot of people compare this. Did you watch that new movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Did you watch season four? You episode watch season nine? four, episode nine <laughs> of Nanny Nine One One. <laughs> Honestly, probably, but I couldn't tell you what happened. It's been 20 years since yeah, I watched that show. That and wife swap are my <laughs> guilty pleasures, dude. I wife swap love. Is honestly, great though. They're <laughs> What a You're crazy telling me. idea. Okay, no, no. Uh, so a lot of people compare this to uh, the the the. the 
The Lord of the Flies. <laughs> <laughs> My brain stopped for a second. A lot of people compare this to The Lord of the Flies right. for obvious reasons. Um, and so I I read a lot of like Lord of the Flies. No, I read a lot of like uh, <laughs> I've read some of the articles book. about this story and sure. prep for this. And in prep for it, I came across this story that we just have to talk about. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. Wanted to let you know real quick. We have an email list and it's not like a, hey, we're going to send you our merch and new episodes all the time. We actually give you updates on these stories as we find out about them. So um, a lot of our episodes we've done a couple years ago now have updates or the, the person the topic was about passed away or was caught by the police or whatever updates we can find on episodes that we've done. We want to let you know about it so that our episodes just aren't you know out there out of date. Uh, it's a really fun way to keep learning new information and then every once in a while we let you know about new uh, events coming up or new episodes uh, and it's just a way to, to help us keep spreading this show. Join that email list. You can text Tillin to 66866 uh, or there's a link in the description of this episode uh, or you can just go to Tillin.com. It's very easy to join this email list. It's everywhere. It's actually really hard to not join it. So. Uh, <laughs> about a guy named Peter Warner. Have you heard of Peter Warner? No. <laughs> are you? Deeper. Are we doing a different? We're going deeper. Okay. <laughs> Peter Warner. Uh, <clears throat> he was alive. Uh, from nineteen thirty one to twenty twenty one. Uh, he was a son of a guy named Sir Arthur Warner, okay. who ran a company called he- Electronic Industries. A, a very big electrics company in Australia. Okay. Electronics company in Australia. Um, when he was a kid, he got an interest in sailing though. And so he couldn't make a career out of sailing. So he became an accountant for his dad's company, did that yeah. for years, but he would sail on like vacations. He would sail about around Australia as a kid. Uh, well, this is now his early adulthood. Okay. And so he's an, working as an accountant for his dad. And then on September 11th, 1966, he is on one of these sailing trips for like vacation. Um, a, by himself, I believe so. Actually, okay. And he's sailing, and he comes across the island of Ata. This is the island, a very small, deserted island, and he notices deserted. A, yeah, there's nothing there. Well, that is. We gotta get some key terms here. Deserted means there was something there. Some oh black. yeah, yeah. So there was actually. This, so this island was there was a local tribe that lived on this island oh, for okay. forever. And they actually all got kidnapped during the slave trade. And so it's vacant now. Um, but there's like structures and stuff from when they were there. Okay, so it okay, is a deserted okay. so there island. There is stuff that was okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. this was an island that had. So at the top of it, you can kind of see that like mound at the top. The yeah. back end of that is a little crater. This is, was a volcano. Okay, okay, okay. And okay. inside there, like an ancient volcano. Yeah. Inside there's where their little village was. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> across this island. Yeah. So he comes across this island and. He's just sailing on his little sail trip. I don't know, probably smoking a pipe. It's September 1966. <laughs> uh, and so he's smoking his pipe. And then he notices from that the island, he rubs his eyes a little bit. And he sees a kid running off the island, shirtless, jumps in the water, and is like running across the water, like waving at him. And then he sees from the bush another kid come running out of the bushes. And then another kid come running out of the bushes and then another kid come running out of the bushes. Eventually there's a group of like eight kids jumping around waving at him. And so he comes in and gets close enough to where one of them could swim out. And the kid says, hey, we've been stuck on this island for 15 months. And he's like, what? (laughs) What? It's a group. There's a group of eight boys and there was one of them who had a watch. (laughs) They could tell it's been 15 months and then he sees a dude with a camera come around from around the bushes. And he's like, oh, I've been out here with these kids for 15 months. I've had a radio to call for help, but I just thought that that would ruin the that episode would ruin the experiment. Uh, that was so big beard. What happened? Was How this, old is a kid? So these kids are 14. They, they go to a Catholic school on the island nation of Tonga uh, and they were in class one day bored. And they're like, it's a beautiful day out. Let's and so lost on an island. So they went down to the pier and they stole someone's boat and they were like, oh, it's going to be a great day. So they just went out on the boat and they had no intention of like going far. They're like, we're just going to sail out, enjoy the day, go back to land. They sail out, make anchor somewhere, and then they all fall asleep and then a storm hits and it breaks their anchor 
and then they just go drifting and they try to open up the sail. The sail gets shattered in the wind. And so then they just drift. And he said they drifted for eight days at sea until eventually they drifted to this island. Um, and they hit the island. They swam up to the island. And then they survived on this island for 15 months. <laughs> These kids, they got together and they set up a fire at the top of that mountain. And it was, this is 1966. This is 1966. And they set up this fire. And so this was their eternal so in flame. The summer of 65. <clears throat> yeah, they go missing mm -hmm. and they survive 15 months. Yes. Eight 14 year old boys surviving Eight, 15, months, 15 on a months deserted island on a deserted island and they set up at the top of the mountain. They set up a flame. So they're like, this is our signal fire. We're going to keep it burning. This is our eternal fire for when the Olympic Games get started on this <laughs> island because we're going to have to repopulate somehow even though <laughs> yeah, they're not sure how that's going to work, but uh, and so they do. They keep that fire burning for 15 months. It never goes out. They said they kept it burning for 15 months. It took 15 months for anyone to see the fire. That's how remote this island is. And they they start hunting, they start fishing, they start killing like the birds around and like little small animals that are on the island. Uh, they find uh, the tribe that lived there had a farm, and so they found when that f that tribe got abducted, they took all of the they all their chickens were left behind. So there's like a hundred chickens live on the island. So they were taking the eggs from the chickens, they were killing some of the chickens and cooking them, like surviving off the island, and. The dude was the guy who find found him. Peter like didn't believe the story because these kids were so fit. Like he's like he's like these kids should not be this fit if they were trapped on this island for fifteen. Yeah, they months. should be malnourished. They should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were like in incredible shape. And he said he said yeah, we were running around the island. That's like, a detail that he put in. <laughs> these kids were too hot. <laughs> these kids were to jacked. be. These kids were like freaking. It was. It, they were in great shape for kids who've been stuck. Uh, on an I noticed at one point you could tell this island is like. It's it's a it's a cliffy island, and so at one point one of the boys did fall off that cliff and break his leg, and they using sticks they stinted it, and were able to like heal his leg, and so that kid that kid he didn't have so his these job. kids had like survival skills. Oh, they had to be Boy Scouts. Yeah, <laughs> these were Eagle Scouts for sure. <laughs> Alex, how long could you make it on a deserted island? Do you think? I mean, how many talking to your microphone? microphone. <laughs> Oh, fine. Now you can't hear me. <laughs> sorry, I did that to you. It's oh, the watch. It's sorry. The watch. Say it again. I mean, how many people? There, eight. Eight, and you're all jacked. Yes, yeah, so you could eat <laughs> seven people. <laughs> well, how many people? I mean, what's the food supply like? <laughs> Alex, are you a cannibal? <laughs> Cut his, no. mic, cut his mic, cut his mic, cut his mic, cut his mic. <laughs> Guys, you don't see this right now, but he's he's looking at Tim with a knife and a fork. <laughs> Alex, put that down. <laughs> That's crazy. Wait, so what's your number? <laughs> yeah, if there's if there's eight people. I mean, probably quite a while. Let's say that only four of them have your skill set. Yeah, four of them are dead weight. Yeah. Does okay. that change it? I feel like as long as there's a few people that are able to help. What if you're the only one? What if you're the like, what if what if the three of us were stranded somewhere and like we have the ability to do the things you tell us to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, but we probably wouldn't know what to do. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how long we'd make that. Let's try it. <laughs> Next season Till on on the aisles. <laughs> um, so these boys surviving yeah. with us. Wow. They sent up. They set up a series of hollowed out coconuts to collect rainwater, and so they could have like safe drinking water. Um, like they set up this whole system to survive, and they did. They survived for fifteen months. The guy when he met the kids. He didn't believe it, and so he radios back to shore, and he says, "Hey, I got a group of eight boys that I found on this island. They said they've been here for fifteen months. The here. missing eight. And the guy, the guy on the other side was like, "Hold on," and he's like, "I didn't hear anything from him for twenty minutes." And then all of a sudden, the voice on the other side comes back and was like clearly choked up, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I cannot believe you found him. This is a miracle," and tells them where to bring them, and so then loads all these boys up. They take them back. And they pull back to port and they port and the family's there. The family's losing them. They're all sobbing. They can't believe it because they've already held the funerals for these kids. They were like, uh, they, it's been 15 months. They just gone. assumed all eight of these kids died. 
um, and all of them are alive and well. And so all of them are and sobbing. Jacked. <laughs> and jacked. So like all the parents are like, what like, did you do? Oh what? Your shoulders. <laughs> like everyone's like eight hot kids. <laughs> eight jacked teens found on an island. Like that's the one detail they start. <laughs> That, that if that was if that happened today, that's a hundred percent the detail <laughs> that would Jack run. Teens. Oh my gosh, man! And so they're all reunited. And they all become parents. fitness influencers on Instagram. <laughs> like if you want abs like mine, you're gonna have to go to an island for <laughs> 15 months. So they all uh, they're all hugging their parents. It's a really emotional yeah. moment. And then the police comes and arrests all of them and takes them to jail for theft because they stole the boat and the guy's boat found out that they found him and he was like, yeah, I want to press charges. That was an expensive boat. And so he arrests all of them. Peter's standing right there and he's like, are you kidding me right now? And so Peter telegraphs his dad. He's like, he's like, hey, I crazy story. <laughs> he's like, you're not going to believe he's this. Like, Let's just get past the part. I found some boys. Anyway. <laughs> I found some jacked boys. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, can I, have, can I have a few hundred dollars? I got to pay off this boat debt. Um, it's 1960, so that's a lot of money. And uh, his dad's like, whatever. How much was the boat debt? Uh, so he comes back and he he gives the guy 150 bucks, and the guy's like, this will cover it. <laughs> it's 1966. It's also an island nation in 1966. And so at the time, 150 dollars is what I mean when I say rich people have always been goblins. <laughs> You know, <laughs> have you seen the video? There's a reporter who was talking to somebody. This was like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and they're at the boat dock, and the guy is like, "Yo, man, you know the economy's so bad because of all this stuff, and like people can't afford groceries." Yeah. And she just goes, um, "Do you feel like you're in the best position to talk about that as you get on your yacht?" <laughs> and he freaking loses his mind, dude. That's really good. Uh, so that I just did the inflation calculator. That's fifteen hundred dollars today. So I mean, which is still, <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheap boat. But it's, like, you got to remember also, this is a small island nation. So like it's their, uh, but their, still, their value of their they've been today. missing for a year. They've been missing for over a year, <laughs> and they come back and you're like, what about my fifteen hundred dollars? <laughs> what about my boat? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, we can probably figure that out, dude. And so he pays for the boat, and then he goes to the king of this nation, and he says, hey, I would like to have. That island. No, what he says is he said he said I'd like two things, and the king's like, I'll give you one. The king was like, I will grant you anything for finding our lost boys, um, our lost jacked boys. Yeah. <laughs> and he says he says okay, two things. One, he said I would like his ripped rap scallions. <laughs> he's like he's like I would like exclusive rights to the story, and then two, I would like fishing rights to the seas around your island nation and the king grants him both of those. And okay. so he takes the story rights and he sells it um, the Goonies. For, so they could create the story like the film, the storyline. And then he sets up and does his dream. He's like, he's like, he sets up a fishing company so he can sail around these islands instead of being an accountant for his dad's company. And then he three years later hires all of these eight boys to be a part of his fishing crew when they graduate high school. And so here he is with the so eight boys. He's the he's the the dude on the and they're all still jacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they join him and uh, they go fishing with him on the on the sea for years. I don't um, know if you notice anything, but the guy in charge, <laughs> he's got a watch. He's got a watch. On. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the story of. Uh, Peter, this is Peter is this guy to get you a close yeah. shot of him um, where he's got, he, he's got a rich dude's haircut. Yeah, especially in the 60s um, where he discovered these these kids and saved them saved their lives. That's I don't crazy. understand how they survived that long. That's pretty incredible. They also set up along uh, all across this island. They set up a food garden where they grew their own food. They had that rainwater system with the hollowed out uh, hollowed out trees and uh, uh, coconuts. They built a gymnasium, a badminton court, and they had a chicken enclosures. And then they had that permanent fire burning for someone to see that fire and come rescue them. And then they, the the kid got examined from a doctor afterwards, and they said, "I mean, your brick healed perfectly fine. You guys did exactly what you needed to do." And that's crazy. Yeah. Could you heal a broken bone? You think? I mean, if it's just putting together a splint, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm I hate the hubris. I'm proud of my Eagle Scout. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm an Eagle Scout. So yeah, those are those are a few stories of boys being left alone. Uh, a couple of them went well. One of them <laughs> went well. The rest of them did not go well. Uh, wow, so. that's crazy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what here's what's wild. They say that e- to this day, if you sail by the island of Ata, I don't know if anything's on that island anymore. It looks completely deserted now. Yeah, but they say to this day, if you sail, those by, boys ever want to go back? Like they're ever like, I miss the island. I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe I don't know. You know, but if you sail along that island at the perfect time at night, they say you can hear the sounds of, of a fiddle off. Beautiful. Do you uh, think this is how a fiddle played? <laughs> is this what you think? This is where you think fiddles are played. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you like that last story about Peter Warner, you're probably going to like Julianne Kopke. It's a story very similar, but there's one person and she survived a plane crash and also survived in the wilderness for like a really long time. It's an absolutely bonkers survival story. So if you like those, you're going to like that one. Check that out, Julianne Kopke. Uh, Hey, and hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you like it, um, make sure you subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all the stuff that YouTubers tell you to do. And if you want to support the show, you can do that on Patreon. Our patrons get access to all sorts of great stuff like this episode early, ad-free. They get a Discord with our hosts and producers. There's even a way to hang out with us once a month on a video call. It's a ton of fun uh, and it helps make this show possible. We appreciate all of our patrons. That's the best way to support. But if not, thanks for being here and we'll see you next week on Things I Learned Last Night. Thanks.